welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlamme. And I'm Chris Costa. Chris, what would you like to talk about today? Well, I thought we could cover EPMS Connect. Uh, can you explain what it does, what it's all about? Sure. Well, basically, EPMS Connect, the software is a web service that you would install at a web uh, server at your location, and then it would allow uh, online ordering systems to be able to um, suck an order right into Enterprise using okay. EPMS Connect. Okay. Now I have a PowerPoint presentation. I can show you that will explain it a little bit better. Sure, sure. Okay. So basically, you would start off with an online ordering system. Now this online ordering system might be something like PageDNA. It mm -hmm. could be PageFlex Storefront. It could be a homegrown system that you've developed. Or it could be a combination of those things. You could have multiple online ordering sites that all take orders for your company. Okay, sure. Um, once the order is placed online, the online ordering system has to be able to send an XML file to the web service that we've installed, EPMS Connect, at your site. It has to be able to send a file in an XML format. It's okay. a specific format that we would provide you that format for. Sure, sure. And then it goes into EPMS Connect. Now the next step is EPMS Connect will take that order, calculate it, and send it to the um, SQL database where mm -hmm. Enterprise resides. Right. So now it becomes, the records get imported into that SQL database. And then the next step is you go into Enterprise, and now you can That's see that order in Enterprise. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Um, can you show me what the website might look like? What are some of the things we can do with it? Sure. Let me get out of this PowerPoint, and we'll go right to the website. Okay, so when you install EPMS Connect on your web server, you'll have a URL that you can browse. When you browse that URL, it'll look like this right here. And these are all the different calls that a website can make to EPMS Connect. Some of these calls will allow you to send information to Enterprise. Some of the calls will let you take information out and display it on okay. your website. Right. Okay, so let's go through some of these. Sure. So some of the things you can do is you can add material to your database, so you can add a new material item. This is a particular submit order call that some of your sites might need to use if they use a special CMXL, CXML format. Um, we have another submit order call, it's the more common one I'll show you in a few minutes. You might want to get the detailed job status, which will tell you the next cost center that the job is going to. You can get the status of an inventory item, how much is on hand, how much is allocated, that kind of information. You can get job production entries, which is basically like your accumulated production screen in Enterprise, so you can see what work's been done on a job. Mm -hmm. You can get the schedule for a job. You can get the shipping status information for a job. You can get um, the status of an actual job, whether it's in process, completed, history, that kind of thing. Right, right. You can see a list of your template codes, or have the site return a list of your template codes. You can submit an order, and we'll take a look at that in more detail in just a minute. And then you can also submit shipments or update shipments that are already exist in Enterprise. So let's take a look at the submit order call. The submit order call is the, the main call, how you get an order into Enterprise. Right, exactly. Okay? Yep. And when you click on that on the website, it actually shows you what the XML file looks like that the site is expecting. And the reason I'm coming here is just to show you some of the fields that you can actually send in. There's quite a bit of information that you can send in with the order. You can send in job, the job number or let Enterprise cal uh, calculate that for the, with the next job number. You can send in customer information, payment inf um, stat, uh, method information, uh, different due, due dates, proof due date, job due date, the order date, the proof time. You can send in um, user-defined fields for the order, for the customer, the tax jurisdiction. You could send in the quantity ordered for the entire order, as well as a template code on the header. You can also send in one or more components. And within the component, you can send in the quantity ordered. You can send in ink information, size information. You can send in either a template code or a finished good code. You can send in stock information, instructions, user-defined fields, delivery dates, and as I said, you can send in multiple components. In addition, you can send in shipment information, package information, and you can even send in images if you want to attach images to the order. Okay, now what if I didn't want to send in all of that information? You don't have to send all of it. Um, you can either send in the information either 
empty without a tag if it's a string field, or you would eliminate the tag if it's a numeric field altogether. Okay. Um, and you can just send in, you know, just a small amount of information. For example, let me close this and open up a sample file that I have of an XML file with a lot less information. In this example, I'm sending in my customer account. I have a job short description and a job detail description here. I have my component number, my component description, how much I'm ordering. I have a template code and a price, and that's it. Okay. Now I'm also sending in some shipment information and a package information. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm sending. Okay, now what about required fields? Does anything have to be added to the file to be sent in to submit? You do have to have a customer account that is there and active in your database. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there's really nothing required. We do recommend that you send in a template code um, because if you don't send in a template code, the order will come in with very little information. You won't have your processes yeah, and right, your materials right. and things, all the meat behind the order. Makes sense, yeah. 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 Um, you, if you send in a template code, it also has to be valid. You can't send in one that doesn't exist. Right. Okay. And again, if you send in things like, like in my example here, I'm sending in freight cost. If I decide that I don't want to send in freight cost, I have to remove the tag completely. I can't send it in with no information. That's the only other thing. Okay. Are there other fields off. like that that would fall into that same? Any field when you're looking at that list that says it's a uh, long or integer, any kind of numeric field. Okay. String fields can be sent empty. Okay. So anything with a quantity. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I can tell you, uh, show you what that order would look like in Enterprise. I've actually imported that order into mm -hmm. Enterprise, that same order. Okay. And this is what it would look like in Enterprise. I'm going to open the order. Now I've brought in my job description, my detail description. It selected my customer. And it brought in all the information um, from my customer account here. I could have overridden that in the XML file, but I chose not to and just brought in the customer account. When I edit the component, I have my description I sent in, my quantity. The price comes in as a manual price, and the reason for that is if Enterprise calculates the price and it's different than what was shown on the order, that wouldn't be a good thing. So right. you'd yeah. want to send in the price that you quoted online. So that comes mm -hmm. in as a manual price. Okay, excellent. We brought in my template code. And then in the layout screen, I have all of my layout information and my inks and sides and my paper and my inks here that were in the template. And I also have all of the processes that were built in the template. Okay. Now let's go out of here and go into shipping and see what it came in when I uh, in the shipping record. So if I go to job planning and choose shipping, you'll see that it brought the shipment information that I entered and it brought the package information in. And it does bring the freight cost in again as an override amount. Okay, very okay. good. Is there anything that differentiates this order as a online order? Well, actually there is. If I go out to the order header screen, the list of my um, orders, I can see that there's a flag here called outside order, and that will be a one if it came in from the outside. And I can also send in an outside order ID. So if your online ordering system has a job number or an order number mm -hmm. um, for that system, you can send it in to that particular field, and then you'll have a link okay. between the two. Perfect. Okay. I guess the, uh, the only other question I might have is what about tracking information after the job is shipped in Enterprise? Can I push that back to my third-party site? We do have another product. It's an FRB right back, we call right. it. And uh, what that will do is, again, it's a, a web service. And it will, once an order is uh, shipped and the trapping, tracking information is there, it can automatically send that tracking information back up to the online ordering system. OK, perfect. Okay. Do you Excellent. have any other questions? Well, I think that covers it very well. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. Please stay tuned for more episodes to come.